Anaximander was a student of Farley's. Oh yeah, the water guy. If you recall, he was more than just the water guy. He was a source of inspiration for philosophers by seeking explanation in nature, explained for reason, rather than the gods. Yeah, cool story, bro, but what does this Charmander say the world is made of? Anaximander of Miletus believed the universal substance was a pyron. Yeah, a pyron. I don't have that in my Pokedex. Let's take a look at three contributions of this early Greek philosopher. According to Diogenes Laertius, Anaximander was born around 610 BCE and died around 647 BCE in Miletus. Anaximander's achievements include constructing the first map of the world, creating a gnomon at Sparta, and having predicted an earthquake. Gnomon? Yeah, again, I can't find this in my Pokedex. <sighs> a gnomon is a part of a sundial. Bertrand Russell notes his scientific curiosity. He held that the Earth is shaped like a cylinder. At the center of the cosmos, he is variously reported as saying the sun is as large as the Earth or 27 times as large, or 28 times as large. He thought the Earth was a cylinder, and his teacher thought the Earth was flat. Yeah, I'm guessing they were both Facebook users. Certainly don't tell any of them that he thought that the Sun and Moon were donut-shaped. Anaximander is sometimes claimed to be an early theorist of evolution. Wow, so it wasn't Darwin. Charmander invented evolution. Cool. Anaximander. And just because it is suggested that Anaximander was an early evolutionist does not make it so. In fact, his ideas aren't anything like evolution as understood today, which suggests a gradual change in species over time. Also, don't give Darwin all the credit, since science is often a team effort. Nerd. As a part of his theory, Animals were first gestated in moisture, surrounded by a fawny bark. When their age advanced, the fawny barks and sea became dry. They were born out of them and lived a different mode of life for a time. Anaximander believed that there arose from the heated water and earth either fish or animals very like fish. In these, humans grew and were kept inside as embryos up to puberty. Then finally they burst and men and women came forth already able to nourish themselves. What makes his theory sound similar to evolution is... In the beginning, humans were born from animals of a different kind, since either animals quickly manage on their own and humans alone require lengthy nursing. For this reason, they would not have survived if they'd been like this at the beginning. So why isn't this early evolutionary thought? According to Barnes, there is no evidence this evolutionary process happened twice. So not gradual change over time. So in regard to his metaphysics, you mentioned the a pyron was the universal substance that comprises the world. Well, I don't see a pyron in any periodic table. For Anaximander, the arche, universal substance, was not water, but rather a pyron. A pyron is something that is boundless, indefinite, or infinite, that cannot decay, that gives birth to everything else, such as the elements. Earth, fire, water, and air. If that sounds esoteric, then it is. Even today, philosophers have a hard time really pinning down what that is. A pyron is a kind of boundless motion that has caused opposites to be separate from one another. These elements are in opposition to one another. Air is cold, water is moist, and fire is hot. If any of them were infinite, the rest would have ceased to be by this time. The primal substance must be neutral in this cosmic strife. This is clearly very religious, with the Greek creation story speaking of divine chaos. This is the divine, for it is deathless and indestructible. Since a pyron is understood as boundless and indefinite, it is worth elaborating. This substance of a pyron is unlimited, not just in space, but also in time. Anaximander believed in a reciprocal action between opposites, particularly hot and cold, they act on one another, and in turn, generating the stuffs 
earth, water, fire, air. For our world of our senses, aka the sensible world, this is reinforced by Anaximander's belief that the earth is drying out by the sun, the seas drying out and gradually retreating as they turn into moisture. Out of the Epiron, the hot and cold is produced, but Anaximander does not explain how or what this process looks like. Perhaps this also relates to the concept of everlasting motion, an eternal cyclical world where everything will be destroyed back into a pyron. So, to summarize, the Earth is a cylinder, humans came from heated water out of the embryos of fish-like animals, and the universal stuff that makes up the world is an infinite, boundless pyron, a kind of friction of opposites. If you have made it this far, then you are probably interested in hearing about Anaximenes, who thought the Earth was in the shape of a table. 